Straw, I'm Parker, and together we are the Battle Hammer. Do -do -do -do. Uh, it is time for another Parker Paints, as you can see by my stacking of shame behind me. Um, they say New Year, New You. Um, it's probably bollocks. I mean, a year is only defined by us travelling around the sun. You know, if you have new stuff to do, great. If you don't, that's fine as well. You just be who you are in this crazy world. Um, but Saying that, I am going to go for something new in the new year. Um, I have picked up some takeaway pots. No, just happens to be where I'm keeping some Winsor & Newton Artist Oil Colours. Whether well, you can see that, I don't know. Um, I've got white, I've got some burnt sienna, some burnt umber, Payne's grey, olive green, and I think that's uh, ivory black as well. Um, the reason I picked up some oil paints is um, I've seen people like Cult of Paint do great jobs on Space Marines with some pin washing and I wanted me some of that action um, to go with these little tiny boats that you can't really see there. Um, when uh, Dystopian Wars releases um, I want to be able to do some pink, pink pin washes um, and fill those nice details with with wondrous capillary fed lines um, so as an experiment and also because of the release of it um, I've had this model uh, which is the legendary Gustav Eiffel from uh, Wild West Exodus um, I've had him for quite some time now um, been mean to kind of get him painted at some point um, but he's perfect for this sort of thing because he's metallic um, and he's got all those kind of very um, inorganic shapes. Um, I'm going to be able to do lots of nice pin washes in all of his details. Um, and also because the next release for Wild West Exodus is going to be the Murder of Hellions box, which is Came and some winged abominations and stuff like that. Very, very nasty stuff. Um, and I think that this will be a really good add addition to that posse. So I think if I can do this, then I can get some practice on some weathering effects with the oils, like using the burnt sienna to do some rust streaks, um, doing the pin washes and stuff like that. Um, hopefully, you know, this is my first time experimenting, um, so I'll be, I won't be teaching you stuff so much as I'll be sharing what I'm doing um, and who I've learned it from. A, a lot of props goes to. Um, I think it's Henry, I can't remember the name, um, but Cult of Paint, I've been watching a lot of their stuff about pin washing on Space Marines, like I say. Um, but also scale modelers know loads about oil washes, they use them all the time, um, and blending oils to get kind of mottled effects and that kind of thing. I don't know if I'm going to go with that with this yet, we'll see how it goes, but no, it's been really cool. Um, so, uh, that's it really. If you want to learn something new, now's as good a time as any say that this was the year of the oils for me. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to go, we'll see. Um, but as we uh, are going to go to do that, on to the next bit. Okay, so here we are at my desk. Um, before I start the actual painting on this guy, I just wanted to go through a couple of things. Um, so anyone who's done basically anything in life, like a school or whatever, you know, the oil and water don't mix. Um, and as such, um, I've got a separate pot for all of my oil brushes. Um, I've got a separate pot for my cleaning thinner, so that's just some of the thinner put in a little jar for cleaning brushes. And again, that's, you know, marked so I don't mix it up with other stuff. Um, depending on your location, um, you might not be able to throw uh, your you know you can't throw it down the sink because it poisons stuff and it's bad so don't do it um, so I'm keeping my oil right. I've only got a little bit so I've basically you know tried it once um, so I'm keeping my oil waste in a separate jar um, I keep my oil paints in these little pots I find these little pots really handy um, get them from you know your local pound shop dollar shop whatever supermarkets um, your little food containers so you can batch cook food and store it in the freezer um, so I've got one of these and I just keep all my oil paints and stuff in it 
um, including these little uh, mixing pots, uh, which are really cool. Um, I've got some that I keep in here just for oil paint. I've got some some that I keep separately for other stuff. Um, and even the pipette that I use, I keep in here. The little dabbers I'm going to use, I keep in here. Um, so I, I don't end up contaminating my normal, quote-unquote, you know, acrylic-based paints or my oil paints so I don't mix stuff up. Um, I happen to have some Windsor & Newton Artist Soil Colours um, because I was told there was good, I, I've seen you know good reviews of them. They're not, although they are expensive comparatively to acrylic paints, for you know how long these will last. You know potentially the rest of my life these will last. So you know they don't become that expensive. Um, I have seen lots of people say that if you're going to get Windsor and Newton ones, get the artists ones specifically because they are the higher grade ones. They've got finer pigment. Um, so that's great. I want to get some Adelung 502, which are oil-based paints made, I think they're by AK Interactive, um, but they're designed specifically for, oil, for miniature painting. So you've got less linseed oil in and stuff like that. I want to get hold of some at some point. Um, over Christmas I found them a bit tricky to get hold of the ones that I wanted. Um, I didn't really want lots of weird colours like, you know, greens and stuff, which may way well be useful, but at the moment I just ended up going for a uh, burnt sienna that I can use for rust effects, uh, a white that I can add to other things to lighten up, um, or maybe do some like white washing, something like that. Um, a ivory black, which is a matte black. Um, uh, that's the one I think I'm going to want to get an Absalom black because it's a little bit grainy. Um, a olive green, I thought that would be useful to have like a dark muddy green colour for like Nurgle and stuff. Um, Payne's grey which is a very 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 dark almost black grey kind of with a blue hint to it which I thought would be good for like oil effects and general um, panel lining and stuff. And I got some burnt umber again, you know a general dirty brown, uh, kind of a orangey-ish brown like a reddy brown if you see what I mean, um, which I think will be good for panel lining and stuff as well. Um, so I'm going to take the burnt umber and the paint grey and put everything else away. Um, I did get some uh, Sansador thinner. I just realised that Sansador means without odour in French, sans odour, which is kind of cool. Um, because I am doing this indoors I don't have a separate separate studio that I can go to so I wanted something that's not gonna stink the room out um, if you want to you can just use normal mineral spirits or white spirits but I, I I thought well you know I'm not gonna use loads and loads so I thought I might as well invest in some um, Sansador thinner because I don't want to have my room stink of mineral spirits all the time <laughs> On to the miniature. This is legendary Gustav Eiffel. Um, I have uh, used Vallejo metal colour paints and done like a zenithal highlight on him. So underneath he's got like gunmetal grey going up to a um, almost aluminium on the top. Um, for the brass parts, I used uh, Victorian brass by um, Scale 75. I've blacked out some of the pipes and Gustav himself, uh, excuse the train, and then I've gone over with my airbrush with a gloss varnish. In this case I think I used um, watered down Art Coat from GW, but I do have some other gloss varnish on the way. I did like two or three coats as well just to make sure um, it was nicely protected. And it was for two reasons, partly to protect it. Um, in case I attack it a little bit with the oil paints, I wanted to make sure it's protected. But also, um, from what I've seen, if you're doing panel lines and stuff, it often behooves you to um, gloss coat everything so you lower the surface tension so that it, it more readily runs into the cracks and stuff. Um, and that's one of the reasons you use oil paints 
with the mineral spirits or white spirit or sanded or thinner or whatever because it's got a much lower um, surface tension than water so you don't get things like um, coffee staining uh, and it runs into the recesses really well. There's a great panel lining video by Cult of Paint if I can remember I'll put a link in the, either the description or I'll do a pinned post um, about uh, from Cult of Paint which is a really good video which I've learnt a lot from and I'm basically I'm not copying them, but I'm you know using them as inspiration. I mean, ultimately, we all get our techniques from somewhere. You know, all of these YouTube people, um, they all learn it from somewhere. Very few people learn things on their own in a vacuum. Go, hey, I've just figured out how to do this thing on my own. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get on with this. So I'm going to start with some Payne's Grey. Um, and like I said, I've got these oil brushes the uh, brushes that I'm using specifically for oils um, oops so I'll take some paint Payne's grey get a little a little dab put that in there Don't forget, you cannot rinse your brush in water, it will not work. Um. Then we'll take some Sansa Oops, use a little pipette to get some out. We'll start with just a few drops. I can always add more. If I want to, uh, and then we'll just mix that in. And you can test how kind of the colour and the um, what's the word consistency on the side of the pot. Think I want it a bit. A bit looser than that, I think. Make sure you don't lick the brush. You know, this it won't do you any good. It's not like acrylics. And another three drops. See how well this works. Always make sure you put your lid back on your thinner because it does evaporate like crazy. If you leave the lid on, it will just completely evaporate. Um, I am going to take a wee bit of blue tack, or white tack in this case, poster putty. Just so I can keep it to a tilt, so I can keep a little deep bit. Um, and in theory, I should. Um, where to start? Let's start on his bum. So, in theory, if I just dab this into there, it should. Oh, beautiful. Just fill in those gaps. You can see the capillary action. Fill in those lines. You can go around rivets. One of the great things about oil paints is you can always clean it up afterwards if you do make a bit of a mess. It's not like acrylics. Let me 
you see that? So, as I was saying at the start of this video, I just wanted something to... something new, something a bit different, something that I hadn't used before, and um, my plan is when I get my... Um, what do you call them? Enlightened for Dystopian Wars, Boats, 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 I will be using these kind of techniques on there. Because um, it does work really well on these inorganic shapes. it really. Um, I was really concerned you know using oils it was going to be messy and horrible actually it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be as long as you kind of like I've, I've made a point of keeping everything separate that should be fine. Uh, one thing you do need to bear in mind um, is that because the um, What's the word? The service tension is so low, you'll find that um, it will follow gravity. So it may well go from this high point all the way down and then fill up this, this lower part here um, as it trickles down. Um, that's just something to bear in mind as you, um, as you go. I am going to be using this Payne's Grey for all of the uh, like silver metallics. And then for the um, goldy, brassy bronze, it's supposed to be brass, I think, um, I will be using the uh, Burnt number. Because I think that will look good. And you're just tapping the surface and letting it go, kind of letting it run where it needs to be. Um, and doing like these little bits as well. If you want to, you can always come in with some mineral spirits afterwards. Um, just a, a very lightly damp. I mean, you don't want it wet. You want it almost almost dry, almost like you dry brushing that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to be using these little. They're not cotton buds. So I don't know what they're called, but you know, like makeup brush type doodads. And then you can clean up afterwards because oils take ages to dry. Um, which is great because it means that you can come in and you know do stuff over time and you're not stuck if it all goes a bit funny you can just tweak it I could have used a black um, I didn't really want to I didn't want it to be too stark I think the blue of the Payne's Grey 
it's got a nice oily <laughs> obviously it's oil paint but you know what I mean it's got a nice oily feel to it well that's it really I'm going to carry on with this for a little while and uh, I'll see you in a little while Okay, so I don't know how well that's coming up. Um, the, it's the only issue with the metallics really is sometimes it's hard to get some definition. Um, you can always do this again. I think I'll leave this overnight to dry and see how it comes out in the morning. Um, yeah, we'll see. I guess some some bits have been look really good, uh, where it's kind of the, the sharper the detail, the better the. Um, capillary reaction the better the effect I'm noticing um, but it's nice to have a certain amount of blue on there or you know bluish uh, so now I'm going to go in with some um, burnt umber Oops. Um, yeah. and this is just for those kind of gold brass parts And I may do some other stuff, we'll see. I'll do both of these for now. That's what it looks like at the moment. I've literally just finished it. Um, I'm going to leave this overnight to dry. Um, I think some of it has turned out nicely and, and been good. Some of it, it's not as strong as I thought it was going to be, if I'm honest. Um, and you can see certain parts in the grill where gravity has um, made it settle. Um, so I'm going to leave it overnight. I might give it another bash. But then if gravity is going to make it go down again, then it's not going to get any better. Uh, but we'll see. We'll have a little look in the morning once it's dried up. And then we'll have a little looky look. Um, but the burnt umber has given the um, kind of brass gold colour a really nice warm orangey brown vibe, which I like as a nice contrast against the kind of the bluer slightly bluer steel um, it's a bit metally if, <laughs> if that makes sense obviously it's a big giant metal robot but it's a bit kind of I think once I've finished painting all the other details like the um, the pilot and the eyes and the base I think it's gonna look better um, and I think once this is dried I'm gonna come in with some uh, orange and do some rust streaks we'll see um, yeah. so we'll see what it looks like in the morning right so I've waited um, overnight about probably I don't know uh, 16 hours ish give or take um, it's kind of you know, dry to the touch. I wouldn't say it's completely set. Um, I am 
not happy with the amount of contrast, I would like a bit more contrast, so I'm going to go in with a second um, run of the Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber. Um, I've actually done the Payne's Grey a little bit thicker this time, um, so hopefully I'll get more um, kind of more contrast because that's what I want to pop. Um, but hopefully it's not so thick that I then, uh, you know, obscure detail and such. But we're going to go in and give it a go. So again, I'm just going in, dabbing the... Um, Paints grey into those recesses. And it looks like this is going to be a higher contrast, so that's good. But so if I go in with too much, I can always um, clean my brush and wick it off. So I'm just going to carry on with this and then I'll always clean it up at the end if I've done too much, but we'll see. Legendary good stuff, I thought after. I, I've actually given it a couple of days for that second coat of um, oil paint to dry because um, I wanted to make sure it was properly set before I put any varnish or anything over it. Because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, use a satin varnish to go over it, which will dull down the shine ever so slightly, which will hopefully bring my intentional highlights up, um, and then it makes it me it makes it kind of safer for me to paint my normal acrylic paints over it again. Um, the second coat of um, the Payne's Grey definitely picked out more of the details. Uh, you can kind of see there and, and parts like that. I was going to do a second coat of the Burnt Umber, but I kind of don't think it needs it. Um, I don't want to make it too brown. I still wanted it to keep a kind of a, a you know, a brassy gold kind of finish. Um, as is always the way, this is kind of halfway through the paint job. I'm doing like the big parts. I think once I've painted the base and you know any other tubes and added a few rust streaks, then it's going to liven up a little bit. It looks a little bit stale at the moment, but I think it's going to really pop a bit more. Um, also, once I've painted over with the satin varnish, I can you know reinforce any highlights I want to. Um, I'm not going to show you me put, putting varnish through a airbrush because what's the point right um, but I'll see you in a little while I think it looks really good I think the um, one thing I am really liking about the oil paints is they're a little um, because I had to wait for times to dry and everything but it, you don't get that same kind of coffee staining um, vibe that you get from a acrylic wash say Agrax Earthshade or whatever um, but, yeah, looking pretty good. See you in a bit. Right, so, uh, this is the um, satin varnish dried. Um, I think it really brings everything together. Um, it stops the 
intense shine so sometimes you can't see some of the um, shadows and stuff because of that shine um, but I think this looks really nice not too shiny sometimes the metallics can be I mean it looks very shiny and bright in the video because of the light um, you can kind of see underneath uh, I think there's a lot of texture and a lot of depth um, however um, I do want certain parts to be kind of highlighted so I'm going to go in with some uh, metal colour aluminium and some of the citrine alchemy which I used to highlight the gold um, and I'm just going to do you know just pop little highlights where I want them you know not everywhere okay so the satin has dried uh, left a really nice sheen to it you know you can still get the metallic sheen but it's not um, weirdly bright which I kind of like I kind of like this um, really brings out the um, because it kind of gives it a, a, a neutral surface texture it means that I think you really get more of a sense of depth with the oil wash might just be me I don't know it might be because I'm looking at through a magnifier but anyway but I do want certain little bits to pop uh, so I'm going to go in with some low metal colour aluminium and just re-emphasise some highlights I'm not going to go everywhere you know I'm not going to re-highlight everything back up just where I want a few kind of points of interest where I want the eye to be drawn you know just like re-emphasize the sharpness of or all that kind of thing. Um, and I think once I've done this, I'm then going to do the. Um, I just wanted to show you, I mean, I know this is going to be like an oil wash video. I just wanted to kind of show you the process, really. You know, make these rivets at the front pop. I'm not going to do like every rivet because I can't be bothered and it will take ages. But like especially at the back here. that I want to be kind of bright. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go in with some... Uh, this is um, Citrine Alchemy from Scale 75. Which is a nice yellow metallic. I'll do the same thing with the gold areas as well. Again, just re emphasizing some of those highlights. Because obviously the metallic is going to be shinier than the, um, than the satin varnish. So in both cases it will just help certain elements pop where they've lost a bit of sheen. Like, you know, rivets and things like that. And really I'm kind of making my, um, you can kind of see it there, 
the real highlights are down the center of the model so the center front and the abdomen you know the legs are kind of darker you know because I figured they'd be oilier um, and whatnot so I'm just going to crack on with this for a bit and then after that we'll have a go, we'll have a go at some rush shriek shall we that might be amusing I can balls that up no problem Okay, so I've done a couple of little bits, just on the um, OSL on the eyeballs, and a little bit on the back. Uh, if you want to learn how I did that, then there's a video that I'll try and link in the description below, if I can remember. Um, and I painted these tubes kind of black, and that was about it. Um, but now I'm going to go in with some rust effect type of things. So I have got some... Uh, this is going to be an oil... An oil thingy got some burnt sienna it's like a nice orangey rusty kind of colour um, I've got it in a little palette here uh, and I'm just going to do little dots of neat oil These, this isn't like a wash this is going to be a targeted thing. So we'll just find a couple of spots. I'll make a bit of a mess, doesn't matter too much because I can clean it up afterwards. In fact that's what I'm planning to do. It's to clean it up and move it around a little bit. And there's just going to be little points where, you know, I want there to be a bit of streaking. And um, just give it a little bit of interest. So now I've done just a few dots, I mean I, I want to make it sure it's visible from every angle but I don't want to cover the thing in rust because this isn't a massively rusty old thing, this is a finely tuned machine so I don't want it to be covered in rust, just a few rust streaks where it's you know wear and tear and just to create a bit of visual interest in the model. Um, so I'm going to leave that to set up for about, I don't know, an hour maybe, um, just to 
let that paint kind of seep in a little bit. I don't want it to become fully dry because I want to create these streaks. Um, so I'm just going to paint the base now. That will take me a little while and then by the time I've done that I can come back and um, finish those streaks off. See you in a bit. Okay, so just did a little bit of paint on the base. Um, it's been about an hour. I've had some lunch as well. So I'm going to go in um, with oops, some of the thinner, Sansador thinner. You can use mineral spirits, whatever you know, thinner you're using. And um, a little pop there. And I'm going to get the brush damp, but not. I don't want it wet. Just want it damp. I'm going to find. Let's start at the back, somewhere you won't see it so much. And then, which hopefully you can see it, that's the important thing. And then I'm just going to drag down that rust streak. Um, and clean it up a bit. And one of the cool things about these, um, especially the Bant Sienna, I've noticed is. Um, Almost the thinner it is, the brighter it is. Um, when it's thick, like like it is there, it's kind of um, you know a dark brown. And then as you kind of drag it down into that rust streak, that's when it almost kind of becomes an orangey colour, which is pretty cool, right? Because of the uh, the nature of the spirits and the oil paint and everything, it looks much more like an oil streak than just a like an orangey line, as it blends out so well. And if I you know if I figure I've put too much on, that's fine. I can always use the a bit more mineral spirits. Like that bit of the back's a bit blotchy. I can use the mineral spirits to kind of clean it up a bit more. I and mean, because we're simulating kind of rain streaks, or whatever, you want to make sure that you're bringing it down. And if we've got any excess, we can always pick it up. And that is, you know. I am very much an amateur at this. I'm not trying to suggest in any way I know what I'm doing. But one of the things I am enjoying about using oil paints at the moment is that kind of um, the work time. You can fiddle about with it. And if you kind of find like it's oh, I don't know how it's feeling, well, you just get some spirits, get a bit of a, you know, cotton bard or q-tip as I believe they say in the new world um, and then just clean it up completely. The only tricky thing is making sure you're actually going down and not kind of sideways. That's a nice one. And also, I'm gonna. One of the reasons I left this till last, and after the um, previous oil step with um, varnish in between, um, it will give a different finish, which is really nice. So, on a lot of models, I normally do a matte varnish, um, but obviously on this, I don't want to do a matte varnish because it's a big metal monstrosity. Creates a little bit of visual interest. I like it. So I'm just going to go around the model. Yeah, it can look a bit weird if, if everything isn't going down. It's kind of my point. You get almost like a like an uncanny valley kind of thing. You're like, hmm, something looks wrong. I don't know what it is. 
you know, if everything's going at a different um, angle, well, it's not going down because gravity works in the same way all the time. Gravity always pulls down. So if your um, streaks aren't going down for whatever reason, it can look a bit weird. So maybe you want to do some of the bits with it. But we'll see. I'm just going to have a play and, and I'll let you know how it goes. So on with the fast forwardy bit. So, as you can see, he's now got some rust streaks on. Um, some of them look better than others. Obviously, this is a, a technique I'm, you know, only just learning. So, uh, practice it makes better. Um, but I'm happy with some of them. The important thing is, like I say, to make them definitely point down. A um, couple of little cool ones on the front there. Like the ones on the back. The ones on the um, kind of carapace. The abdomen are a bit harder to do because they don't go directly down I think on a tank something more um, obvious it might work a bit better but you know still creates a little bit of visual interest I didn't want lots and lots on there like I say because it's supposed to be a um, well used piece of kit um, so I'm gonna finish up what I can in the next kind of couple of hours probably do the base mainly um, I'll leave the driver until later on and then I'll show you what it looks like on the spinny thing um, onto that bit. So here we have legendary Gustav Eiffel in almost all of his glory. Um, do still have a couple more bits to finish on him as a model. Uh, obviously the driver, i.e. Gustav Eiffel himself, um, and a bit of work on the base. Um, but apart from that, he is Dunsky. Um, really like the way the oil washes have brought out the details. Uh, looks a lot better on a finished model than it did kind of at the start. I think especially when you've got a large area of metallics it's hard to kind of see it all. But now I think it does bring out some definition like those uh, eye parts, the lenses and whatnot, and the abdomen at the back uh, really brings out those details without it looking kind of washed out and um, kind of coffee stainy like standard acrylic washes can often do. Um, the rust streaks are okay, um, definitely something I need to work on a little bit more. Um, I wonder if I would like a slightly brighter orange. Um, I don't know, I think maybe I could... Uh, oof, maybe I'd put in some like rust effects, like standard rust effects like I did on the Plague Bearer a little while ago, and then put in the oil wash rust streaks over that. I think they'd complement, you know, if I could get that balance, then I think they complement each other really well. Um, glow effects have come out alright, uh, yeah, pretty chuffed. Uh, legendary Gustav Eiffel is almost ready for the table. Uh, so, thank you for watching. Um, if you did, really appreciate it. If you didn't, then you won't hear what I'm saying because you didn't watch it. Um, if you want to help out the channel, there's various things you can do. We've got links down below. Patreon links and affiliate links and all that kind of jazz, coffee links and all that. Um, but if you do nothing else, the number one thing you must do is don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked it and want to subscribe. If you don't like it and don't want to subscribe, you don't have to like and subscribe. But we would like it if you liked and subscribed. And until next time, stay hammered.